Jesus Christ shed his blood, guys. I was preaching. I was preaching. He shed his blood on the cross. He shed his blood on the cross. Let me heal you. Let me pray for your healing, bro. Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross. He gave his life. Let me pray for you, bro. Let me pray for you. Jesus Christ shed his blood for you. He gave his life for you on the cross and died for you on that cross. And he gave his life and Jesus, it's Hamza. It's Hamza himself. It's the main man. Jesus died on that cross and he shed his blood. I'm sorry I'm preaching, but I was here first. I was here first. Jesus gave his life on the cross for you today. I was here first. I was here. Do you know who's listening? God. And he's, and he's loving it. <laughs> he's loving it. It says, the Bible says that all have sinned. All fall short of the glory of God. Is God holy? Is God holy? Is God just? Is God wise? Is God merciful? Yes. Is God holy? Yes. Is God merciful? Is God just? Amen. Now, if God is holy, just, and you're a good guy, God is holy, just, and merciful, have you ever lied? Yes. How many times have you lied? So many times. But well, what does that make you? A liar. When you meet God, what will happen? I'll be punished. You are, you, this is good thinking, yes. Yeah. Now, do you know that instead of you being punished, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Lamb of God came and died on a cross for your lies. And so when you lied, instead of God judging you like you said he would, Jesus take, took your judgment for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, if your dad was here, right, and you were dying of cancer, right, of your kidney failure, your kidneys are packed out, right? And your dad said you could have one of my kidneys. Would you take his kidney? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, God has given you more than kidneys. He's given you a new life in Jesus. He's offering it to you today. Now, if you died tonight and you've been lying, what will happen to you? When you meet God. So you meet, you, you meet God and you've been lying. I'm not saying you're lying now, but you've been, you say you've been lying. You meet God. What would happen to the liar? Yeah. So God has given you the chance to be saved right now because of what Jesus has done for you, bro. And you're so special, you're so special that God, the Son, Jesus Christ, came and died on that cross. And if you trust Him today, when you go to bed tonight, you, don't, you will not have to fear death because your sins will be forgiven and washed and cleansed. Is that amazing? So were you going to make the decision today? Not now. Not now. Will you think about it? Will you think about it? I'm going to preach now. The Bible says that God is a holy God. God is a mighty God. God is a glorious God. God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He is a glorious God and a mighty God. He is a holy God. Now this God. This God is a great God and He gave Ten Commandments. Do not, and listen to this now, God said this in His Word. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Now tell me this. Tell me this. Tell me this. Why do you bow at the Kaaba? Why do you bow at the Kaaba? It says do not worship any image and you bow to a black stone. What is that all about? Some Muslim explain to me please. Can you explain? Can you, can you explain to me please? When a Muslim bows and he bowing to the black stone. But it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not have any graven image. So tell me, Muslims, why do you bow at the Kaaba? Can you explain to me? I don't understand. 
It says in the Holy Bible, the Torah, did you know that the Prophet Muhammad, when he saw the Torah, he kissed the Torah and put the Torah on a cushion. And the Torah says this, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and thou shalt not make unto me any graven image. And then the Muslim, my friends, and I admire you, they bow, they bow, they bow before the Kaaba. Who are you worshipping? Why do you bow before the Kaaba? What do you, what do you believe Wow, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I finished. Why do you bow and worship and kiss a stone? Why kiss a stone? Why kiss it? It's no God. Have no other graven image. Have no other graven image. Now, let me ask you something, sir. Have you ever lied, sir? Everybody has lied. Have you lied? Everybody. Have you lied? I mean, there is always a lie. How? Somewhere in your, you can't hide that. Okay. How many I'm times sure. have you lied? No, well, no. I can't tell. How many? How many? Okay, three times. Three times. Right. <laughs> uh, what does that make you? What does that make you? Liar. Three times liar. So, well, what is a lie? I mean, if I tell you, if you tell you, you admire people and you really don't admire, so it's a lie. I like you, I like you. You see? I like you. But you said three lies. You said three lies, yeah? Yeah, but yeah. it depends okay. on the lies. So you when, you meet, when you meet God, when you meet God, yeah. when you meet God, what does God do with liars? Yeah, okay, but it depends on the lies. Well. Okay. If I tell you, you are very nice. Have you made big lies or little lies? Little. Oh, little. Very, very little. Right. If, I, if I make a little lie, Am I still a liar? Am I still a liar? So, I, I lied to you. I lied to you. I lent 10 pounds off you. But I, I make a little lie that I'll give it you back. But I was lying. But imagine your wife. Is that, am I a liar? Yeah, I'm a liar. But imagine, imagine your wife doesn't feel great. But you say to her, oh, I love you. You look great, my what if my wife? But what if my wife is ugly and I tell her she's lovely? Is that nice? Yeah. <laughs> when you lie, you come before God and there's judgment day. How do you get rid of judgment? How do you face the judgment of God? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Liars, do liars go to hell? Do liars go to hell? They lie and they lie. They, do they go to hell? Little or big? Do liars go to hell? You have like 20 other people and you point at me. Because you're a good dude. You're a good dude, bro. Give me five, man. Yeah, man. You're a good Muslim. He's a good Muslim. He's a good man. Now, here. Here it is. You have a good Muslim. Yes, you can. You can have nice, very nice, many nice Muslims. Jesus Christ, you see, saved you from your lies when you lied. You see, when Christ died on that cross, he died in your place. Now, if there was a fire, if there was a fire, and th my friend here, right, there was a fire, and he was in his house, and the house was on fire, if the house was on fire, yes, and you was in the house, and you was in the house, but you, but, just listen, listen, no, you slipped, you slipped, you've slipped, and you've fallen on the floor, and you can't move. I have a mobile phone in my pocket. And you can't use your mobile, it's broke, yeah? And I was outside, I was outside. I was outside, listen, I was outside. I was outside, and only I could help you. And if I didn't help you, you would be in the fire. Would you want me to help you? Yes, you would. I don't think you'd be able to carry me very far. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. Yes, you would want me to help you. If you're in the fire of judgment and the fire of God is coming upon you, is that big fire or little? It's a big fire because God is great. You see, God is a holy God. You believe that? You told me that before. God is a great holy God, and fire is coming upon every man and woman who breaks the commandments of God. You know what? You know what? You've made my day, you lot. It's really nice to see you all. See these nice smiles. See his smile and your smile. He's got a nice smile. And you've got a nice smile. And you've got a nice smile. And you've definitely got a nice smile. Right? Now, the fire of God is coming. If I knew how to help you from that fire, would you want me to tell you? Well, it's a real fire. Yeah. The fire went upon Jesus. 
Yeah. It says, it says, it says, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. It says that Jesus Christ is the Lamb. Uh, you can in a second. In a second. The Lamb of God came to die for us to save us from the fire and judgment of God. To save us from the fire and judgment of God. Now, if you want to be saved from hell, if you want to be saved, if you want to be saved from hell today, and you want to go to bed tonight, I heard the other day, I don't know if it's true, but I heard this story of an ex Muslim. I heard a story of an ex Muslim going to bed at night crying. And this ex Muslim, who was a Muslim at the time, he was Lucky crying. Still to be alive, though. He was crying. You know why he was crying? Because he said, I feared hell. I feared dying and going to hell. He feared the punishment for He apostles. feared hell and he didn't know how to deal with hell. And one day somebody told him that Jesus died for him. My friend, Jesus died for you on that cross. He died for you on that cross. And, he, and if you, Jesus, on the, cross of, on, on, on the cross for you, my friend. He died on that cross. And this is Christianity, bro, yeah. We're preaching grace. You want to ask a question? Anybody want to ask a question? Anybody here want to ask a question? Let me just finish and then you can ask questions. The grace of God, the grace of God, and the love of God is seen in Christ dying on the cross for us. So repent, because I don't want you to go to the fiery furnace of hell. I don't want you to go to judgment. Why is God so angry? Well, in Romans chapter 1, it talks about the wrath of God. And the Greek word for wrath is righteous judgment. So when God is angry, it's a righteous anger, an injustice. If you see a little girl being raped, if you see a little girl being raped, right? And you, and you just walk coolly and said to the guy, Hey, come on, bro. Don't be doing that. Now, let, let me finish. Let me finish. But what if you see the little girl being raped and then we see you do this? The little girl's being raped and then you... Let me finish. Let me finish. And we see you do this. Stop it! You horrible, wicked man, you. You're getting angry. Why? Because it's righteous. And God is angry because he's angry at the wicked every day. He's angry at those who are thieving, murdering, stealing, hypocrites. He's angry. He's angry. Can I ask you a question? You ask me a question. Okay. Would you kindly, if you don't have to, but would you kindly explain to us, just in a minute, what your belief is? My belief? Yeah. About what? Uh, whether, whether you're... You believe in God or not, whether you're a, a Jew or a Muslim or an agnostic. Share with us what you're talking about. Just for a second. Yeah. I have sort of Jewish, Christian roots in my family, but I don't believe in any of it. I think anything that relies on a book that was written thousands of years ago can't be trusted. Nothing can be trusted. It's been written now. If there is some sort of ultimate power, it's not going to have emotions like we have, like anger and jealousy and you know sadness. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to have a sun to send. It's probably alien. It's probably you know something far better than we are. Some sort of ultimate power that we'll never actually know. And that book in your hand, I mean, what's actually written in there that you can trust? Okay. Okay. So would you say reality is real? <laughs> Would you say reality is real? Technically, it's not because it doesn't last. Reality real. Yeah. How do you know that your brain? Reality has the word real. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know, right? If you're not going to trust this book, you're trusting in you, right? I don't want to do that. Don't trust in you. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Because I let it talk. Why do you think you have the answers? Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. This is an equal opportunity. Yeah. All right. It's an equal opportunity. How do you know this reality is real? How do you know that your brain right now is not being messed by a supercomputer over on the other side of the universe? How do you know that it's not an alien? Well, How do you, you know? That's the point. You don't. You don't. Say that again. You don't know anything. Right. You don't know anything. So you could possibly be wrong about what you just said about me. Yeah, yeah, sure. Of course. There we are. There we are. Now let me give you my argument. Surely if you self-admit that you don't know, what? then that's the only thing that you can actually say. What? Have you ever heard of the transcendental argument? 
No, nope. I'll give you the transcendental argument. It's called the impossibility to the contrary. Without the idea that God created the universe and that he helps us to interact with reality, we couldn't know anything. It's called the transcendental argument and it's called the, uh, the fleshing it out, the impossibility to the contrary. So without, 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 without that idea, you couldn't know anything. Says who? Right. So, so what we get, what we get from these folks here, these folks who were lovely, and I love you, bro. All we get. Oh, oh. I don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have everything, bro. Everything. You can come and stay. You can come and stay, you can come and stay for a weekend if you want. You can come and stay. Very good. We've got missionaries today, and when they go, you can come and stay. Now, did you notice? I gave an argument called the impossibility of the country. Tag. The, it's called the tag or transcendental argument. No atheist can deal with it. And what we got from these people, and I'm not including you in this, I'm not including you, but I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I heard great logic, I heard great arguments. No, this is what I heard. Rubbish. Rubbish. That does not count in a debate and a discussion. You can't just say rubbish. I give an argument. You've got to counter it. So, if you want to believe in aliens... Uh, no, if, no, if I say there are pixies at the bottom of my garden, it's down to you to counter that, is it? I don't think so. No. Okay. It's so, not for you to so counter if you want to believe in pixies, pixies the you believe in pixies, but I think it's more logical to have a mind who created everything and gives us reality. Okay. Here's another question. Equivalent what, of is, what, my what is your for thought? What is your thought? And my name's Jason, by the way. Cornelius. Cornelius. Great name, Cornelius. I've got a good friend in Manchester called Cornelius. He always buys me food. A lot of smart people. Okay. Are you ready? All right. Cornelius, what do you think of Jesus Christ when he says this? He says, I am the way, in John 14. He says, I am the way the truth and the life. And you know something about you, what I like, right? You're a very kind, intelligent person, right? It says this, it says this, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. What do you think of that? I think there are people in asylums all over the place who do exactly the same thing and no one listens to them. Okay, that's your argument. Okay. But, but, but what if a person said, I am the way, the truth and the life, died and rose again? What do you say then? I would ask the Okay, so do you believe first of all Jesus existed? 